What's up gang? Joe at Momentum Works. Today we're talking about actuators. A lot of guys think, oh, like that's a wastegate actuator, or that's a VNT actuator, that's a VGT actuator. Today we're actually gonna talk about the differences. Um, I have a pneumatic wastegate actuator, I've got a VNT actuator, and I've got the infamous VGT actuator. Stay tuned, we're gonna jump into this. All right, guys, so I've noticed this most with the Detroit customers, and not that I'm calling you guys out, but oftentimes the easiest way to identify your turbo when you have a Detroit is to say, hey, does it have a wastegate actuator on it, or does it have a VNT or a VGT actuator? And the guy's like, oh, like it's an actuator, like not knowing that there's a difference between them. Um, and if you look at our Detroit video, I'll leave the link in the bottom here, it tells you how to tell the difference between your Detroit turbos based on the actuators. Um, but today I want to talk about the different actuators and what exactly they do. So the first guy we're going to talk about is the standard wastegate actuator. So basically this is an air powered actuator that opens and closes the wastegate inside the turbo. And we will take a look at one of those on the turbo. Let's cut to that clip here. All right, guys, so we're going to take a look at this cutaway model. Uh, this would be a regular waste-gated, pneumatic waste-gated turbo. Uh, you can see this is just an air-powered actuator. And what this actuator does is operate the wastegate on the turbo. And for those not familiar, the wastegate basically opens up and bleeds off excess excessive, ex uh, excessive exhaust gas pressure. So that uh, when you have the exhaust gas spinning the wheel here, when you get to the amount of boost that you want to run, the wastegate would open to bleed off this exhaust gas so that you don't over spool. So how this works is this wastegate actuator would be mounted on here and there would be a rod connected to this arm here that operates this little trap door, which is your wastegate. So this is a pneumatic wastegate actuator. Air pushes on it and opens up this door to allow you to bleed off manifold pressure so that you can regulate boost. Next up, we have the air-powered VNT. VNT stands for Variable Nozzle Turbo. Um, and this actuator operates a VNT similar to a VAGT, but you can see here it's pneumatic. It uses an air source to push this rod to actuate the VNT vanes. All right, guys, so next up, we're gonna take a look at the air-powered VNT actuator. So this actuator is operated by air. It's pneumatic, similar to the wastegate actuator, but this is for operating the VNT, not a wastegate, not a VGT, but a VNT. Uh, VNT is for variable nozzle turbo. And you can see here, if you look here in the veins, these move back and forth. And if you look in there, you can see how it redirects the air coming through, hitting the turbine wheel to you know dictate if it's a small AR or if it's a large AR, depending on if you're coming off idle and if you're at full RPM. So basically, this actuator gets input from like a V-pod or something like that that controls the air, and the air is going to move these veins through a mechanism. Um, you can kind of get a look at the unison ring back here. I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing. How it, the unison ring moves. And granted, guys, this is a model, so I know it's kind of hard to see. But this actuator moves these VNTs to redirect the air to change the AR of the housing. Last up, the electric VGT variable geometry turbo actuator. Uh, this one uses electric input. So basically this plugs in and it's controlled by the ECM. And you can see this gear here is commanded by the ECM to open and close the VGT vanes that are in the turbo. And we will take a look at that here. And a quick change of location for a check-in on the VGT turbo. So here we have the electric VGT actuator, which like we mentioned, has the electric input from the ECM um, that has a gear. And basically that gear lines up with this half gear and this goes back and forth. The ECM commands this open and closed. And basically when you do that, what's happening inside the turbo, and here's a blown up one that we get to take a look at. These veins, and this one's seized up guys, um, these veins move together in the unison ring back and forth to open and close the passageway um, to make the AR of the turbo vary to act like a small turbo or a big turbo. So this electric actuator is moving this gear here on the side of the turbo. Guys, there's no good way to do this. Boom. You can see how that moves back and forth. And this is what's going on inside. These veins are going up and down to make the passage smaller or larger. All right, guys, so we talked about the three different kinds of main actuators you're gonna run into. 
One being the pneumatic wastegate actuator, two being the pneumatic VNT actuator, and three, the electronic VGT actuator. So there's all different kinds of actuators that can be on turbos and they all have different things. One actuator we didn't actually talk about is the oil fed VNT actuator. So basically as we looked at the air powered VNT actuator, there's one that's actually powered by oil pressure as well. So, you know, a lot of guys will just say actuator, but an actuator can be so many different things on a turbo. And I mean, you know, actuators are used in all different kinds of applications outside of turbos, but at least for the sake of turbos, there's all different kinds of actuators. So, you know, it's really important to really know the difference when you're replacing actuators and knowing what they do. And at the very least, I just hope this video is kind of informative on the equipment that you have on your turbo that's on your truck. So if you'd like me to go more in depth in any of these topics, uh, as far as how VGT turbos work, or how these actuators work, or you know when you should have an actuator versus when you shouldn't. That could be a whole other video because I mean, a wastegate actuator controls boost, and that's a big topic because a lot of guys want to, you know, they want all the boost, they want all the boost pressure, thinking that's going to make power. But you know, boost pressure doesn't necessarily mean power all the time. I mean, usually it does, but you mean there's also CFMs, your flow rates, and things like that that dictate how much horsepower you're going to make based on the turbo. So if you want me to go in depth in those topics, leave a comment below. Say, hey, Joe, I want to see a video on this or a video on that, and I'd be happy to do it. Guys, any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Give us a call, uh, shoot us an email, send us a carrier pigeon, whatever it is, get in contact with us. We want to hear from you. Thanks for watching.